Oh man, what should be the first song I play? Halloween! Yes! Let's see this cut there. No, I can back up. Oh, wait a second. I don't want you to hear that. But that's okay because this is a brand new raw. Oh, I don't want to pull that up. So here we go. We have the new season of Raw. Unfortunately, you saw the same old hobo Tom. Back to go hoboing wildest videos. Making them, I'll post it up to YouTube later. So again, first couple shout outs. Again, on Discord, it was a really fun show. Uh, let's see here. I'll do this in reverse order. Dan Blaze, you're out of here. Danger 3210. You told Nikki Cross to take it all off. And Fanohi 33, run, don't walk. And again, that's everyone that kind of interacted with me on Discourse. Thank you, guys. You got your shout-out. Um, eventually, I think I still have about... I think it's... No, it's not that. Oh, I think I'm down to about... 60 days... For... My... Penalty box time on YouTube. I'll be able to live stream again. Woo! And this time I've might have learned my lesson. Probably not. I'll probably screw up again. But at least it'll be something longer. I'm trying to think. I think I'm gonna cover more AAA. Because they're so bad. AEW has a pretty good tier of copyright protection. And Impact's got Impact hasn't zonked me yet. They've said you better watch it though. So I have to be kind of careful what I do. But I'm going to talk about Ron, since this is an original show, for the most part. I can do and say almost whatever I want, as long as I don't put on certain music. I think it's going to be Mortal Kombat, because it has begun! And I don't want to tempt the people at YouTube to honk me again, especially for bad songs. But let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. It starts off with brand new graphic. Love it. It looks good. Feels like a proper show entrance. Almost something from the Attitude Era when I first remember seeing Raw. Um, that, I do like the new stage design. That's really good. The thing I like about it, it's different. It has almost a 3D effect. Where, especially with Ricochet stuff, it looks like it's kind of popping off the screen. That's cool. Again, more strobe light makes this guy happier. And then, what was the other thing I like? The ramp's kind of cool. I like the fact that they did away with the LED ramp. And they have the curved Titan Trot, multi Titan Trot thing. They still can't. The announce table up at top, which I'm fine with. And they had 
pyro. I like me some pyro. Everyone likes fireworks, folks. Well, except for puppy dogs. I don't think she's very reacts that much. She doesn't react that much to, to fireworks when I hear them. I can hear them from the baseball ground. Um, they do have a cool new emblem. They do like that as well. Um, things to like the least though. Emblem, emblem's fine. It is what it is. I think it's more like triangular shaped. And I'm doing that the wrong. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, it's like an upside down. Like that. It's not that. It's a heart. That's the cool devices. Don't kids ask your parent what, 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 what cool devices are. Obscure anime reference there. And you hear it's gone by. They also have uh, the Right Stuff anime catalog somewhere. That's okay. I'm getting sidetracked. You have to fill that in too. And I have to find that blue pen. That's okay. So it starts off. Uh, Ray Mysterio comes out. He's supposed to have a match with Seth Rollins. The son is in the front row. And then Brock Lesnar shows up. And Brock Lesnar just shows up and starts to murder everyone. Um, he beat up Rey Mysterio. Picked up poor Dominic. Threw him like into ring post. Suplex him. I'll tell you what. If Dominic learned anything, he's learned how to sell 301. Because that was really good. I mean, he was getting tossed around all over the place. Um, yeah, it looks like he killed poor, poor Dominic. I mean, they were pulling out all the stuff to get people invested into this brawl, and they actually did. Uh, Dominic's whole like a pro got card out. I eventually heard, you actually heard the ambulance go off too. Indeed, and of course it's the local medical facility, because if not, people like swarm to the local hospital. So I'm at the local hospital. Ray Mysterio Jr. is accompanying us up. Yeah, Ray Mysterio! I'm going to see him. No. So they just, they're like, uh, we better not say that anymore. It's a local medical facility. Or in Daytona Beach, a clinic. Because we can't afford a I've never been to Halifax Hospital, but I don't want to go there. Hospitals are just bad news all, all around. But uh, so the first match starts off with Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss, and then Becky Lynch shows up, and we do have a whole new commentary table. I'll tell you what, minus the Lacey Evans match and the last match, commentary was freaking awesome. There was very little banter between the commentators when there was. It was related to what was going on in the ring or it related to the wrestlers. And I'll tell you what, the new guy they brought on, he's good. Jerry the King Lawler is that stabilizing factor. Uh, Vic Joseph, how long has he been there? He, he seems like he has been doing this for a long time. A lot longer than I think his resume probably says. He just seemed like he got... And the floor of things, that commentary table was awesome. The king was trying pretty hard to to be civil too, and it was, it was kind of funny. Unless you know uh, Jerry the King Lawler in his past, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, he's just listening to Vince." No, he's he's, he's trying to bite his tongue. You know, he wanted to see Sasha Banks' brown panties. Poor Tessa. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um. I didn't get that moment because I've been bad with impact. But Madman Fulton suplexed Tessa Blanchard and literally like pulled her tights so far you could actually see the panties that Tessa Blanchard was wearing. Yes! Uh, between that and just seeing drunk Eddie Edwards and the Sinister Minister Talk about the Church of Satan, and of course, this is probably the Church of Satan and the State of Nevada is probably the same thing anyway. <laughs> that, that made that made Pan Blaze break out laughing. It's like, ah, that's a good one. LOL. Again, that was a 
Impacts. Tell you what, they're they might give AEW a run for their money if they keep up doing what they're doing. I just bleed myself again. This has been itching like anything. But it starts off uh, Sasha Banks versus Oxford Bliss, and Becky Lynch is on the commentary. Becky Lynch gets team again. I like it when they get their entrances. Um, Sasha is obviously distracted, so she gets thrown up by Alexa Bliss. She has she has Sethitis, which is you get distracted very easily. And then in the background, you hear the siren. And I'm like, Scott Steiner, Scott Steiner's coming. They're gonna have Scott Steiner here. Oh, FSA ambulance. That was a downer. That was the second time in a wrestling show that we've been trolled about Scott Steiner. The first one was at NXT. They had the sirens go off, and it was the fashion police. Then they had the ambulance siren go off, and it was the ambulance. But both those times, I'm like, Scott Steiner. Big poppin' pumps! Got your hook up! All my freaks out there, holler if you hear me. I'm the freak fella! Scotty Steiner. Awesome, awesome wrestler. One of my favorite tag teams, the Steiner Brothers. They were just so cool back in the day. <laughs> they should have had Scott Steiner show up. <laughs> Him, Hulk Hogan, and Ric Flair in the same ring. Oh, I'll get to the Ric Flair Hulk Hogan. Don't you worry about that. But with that, um, the Steiner, I figured the sirens were coming in. Uh, Becky started to stand up to the table. Uh, yeah. You could just knowing Jerry the King Law, he's probably staring straighter, but saying, Becky, get down. You said you wouldn't do this. Oh, you promised. Oh, oh stop putting on the wrist tape. Oh, let me take that. Oh, yeah, let me focus on what's going on in the ring now. Um, so it was pretty good. I mean, the announce team did an amazing job. Again, minus the women's match where the king kind of slipped a bit back into being Jerry the King, Jerry the, the, the Dirty King Lawler. And the Seth Rollins match was, was okay. And, and, and the end setting was what? So there's a lot to talk about this show. Uh, what else was there? Oh, yeah, it was also announced that Brock was being questioned, but you never really saw that. Just heard Paul Heyman speak for him. He blames Vince McMahon. I'll get to that later. Uh, what else was there? It was actually a pretty good match. Um, Sasha pinned. She had to grab the tights and stuff, typical heel stuff. And it was a Becky and Sasha showdown in the ring. Uh, Lynch. She has a pretty good European uppercut. I wonder... I've never seen her use a European uppercut before. I wonder who she, I wonder who she learned that from. Seth doesn't do that. Finn would. Well, would. I don't know. I'll think about that later. But Sasha Banks went over in this match. Eh. It was a ham sandwich. And I don't know. Sasha just doesn't do it for me, though. It wasn't botchy. It was smooth. It was okay, though. I don't know. Not not my cup of tea. Uh, then we had a Firefly Funhouse <laughs> Pro promo for it was going to be later than that. Run, King, run! Jerry the King Lodge is terrified of that. Uh, let's see here. What else is there? Oh, yeah. Then they had... Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler versus Heavy Machinery. But it was weird because in like the middle of this match, they had like an interview with Seth Rollins. Like right, right, like they did Roode and Ziggler. They had to stand in the ring between their opening when they come out and the commercials and then having to deal with the interview. They had to stand there for a good 10 minutes. I feel bad for them. It's on the heavy machinery. I'll tell you what, Tucker Knight looks like he lost a lot of weight. 
Uh, it's hard to tell with Otis if he lost anything because he changed in, into the trunks. Otis is just having a fun time, though. They're like, we're going to pay you double if you show your belly. So, he, he's loving it, though. Tucker Knight's really good. Uh, Dolph, of course, does not know how to, know how to wrestle big guys because you don't try to shoulder tackle someone a lot bigger than you. Uh, and t tell me what, Knight's still really athletic, too. You can see that dropkick, which is fun. Um, then there was the trade the trade off suplex. Uh, a little rough. I couldn't do any better of a job though. It was fun. The crowd was really hot for this match. I mean, Tucker made Tucker he made it so much easy. He took most of the punishment. Um, they did wind up doing a, a double team suplex again as the the delayed suplex. That's that's just awesome looking still. Uh, Rude sells amazing. Wow, he's so good. He needs to wear a suit when he does interviews and stuff. That robe, but that, but he looks like a million bucks in that robe. Uh, Tucker then again. Gets gets the gets the hot tag. Then Otis. Oh, he does that double caterpillar. That was pretty cool. So good, though. I mean, the transitions were good. The announced team, I'll tell you what. The announced team actually made this match a lot better than it would be on paper. And that's a huge credit to those three guys. They did amazing. Because if not at this point, it just would have been Corey Graves and Renee Young bantering back and forth about some ridiculous thing. At least they're, at least they're, they're trying to educate the King. The King's like, yeah, I've been... In, in, I've been out of the ring with people as big as You don't do that. It makes sense. Uh, the other guy's doing color. Uh, Vic Joseph is kind of prodding questions out of the king about, well, you've been in matches like this. How, how have you handled yourself? King gladly answers. But the thing is, it all pertains to the match they're watching. So with that, they're not going on. They, there weren't that many side tangents. There was a little bit with Becky and Sasha and Alexa Bliss. That's just Sherry the King Lauder, though. You can expect it, but in this match, it was all they're announcing had to do with the match that they were seeing. Made sense. It didn't take away from the match, it added to the match. That's what it should do. That's what commentary should really do. That's why Corey Graves and Renee Young, yeah, they had a blast. They seemed like they're having blasts. This match sucked. Um, by the way, this match sucks even more because they barely paid attention to it. So therefore, I mean, even with the help of the announce team, and Heavy Machinery is one of my favorite modern day tag teams, this was a surf and turf match. Then it was a, oh, October 31st on Halloween of all days. Yeah, that is. It's a Thursday. I can't cover that. I have to be at work. I'll make my students watch it. Then I might get fired. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing a group live stream. A group video, guys. We're going to watch wrestling and talk about it. Yeah, I'm sure that'll get me over great at my job. <laughs> I have to pay that bill tomorrow, too. After I deposit some check. Actually, this week. Uh, but then, the crowd was really hyped for this next segment. I mean, it was Miz TV featuring Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan. And the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Whoa! They were loving it. Flair! Was Flair shooting on Hogan? Oh, I don't know what was going on. I thought we were going to have a match then and there. Hogan thought he was going to have to deck Flair. <laughs> Flair, when's Flair going to bleed? Because he looked like he wanted to bust himself open again. But instead, and, and, and this is a pretty valid question, how much money did the Saudis actually fork over to Vince McMahon to have Team Flair versus Team Hogan? And the captain for Team Hogan is going to be Seth Rollins. And Randy Orton's going to be on Team Flair. 
King Corbin jumps Seth, so he's obviously on Flair's team. Then Rusev face Rusev? We'll see. Helps out Seth Rollins. Then it's just a brawl. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> Ric Flair looked like he was he was enjoying something before this segment. He was just all wound up. The Miz seemed to, to be absolutely giddy and besides himself. The Miz was having the most fun ever, everyone, except for you can see in the back of you can see his you can see his eyes. It's like that wasn't part of the script. He's trying to think of what the script was. I don't think at this stage of the game you could give Hogan. Well, well, Hogan could probably give a couple bullet points too. It's like, listen, this is the this is the arena you're in. You have to give this promo about this person. Go out there. Ric Flair is like, woo! I get to be on TV. Woo! I'm going to blade myself again. Woo! So, Ric Flair, Ric Flair doesn't read scripts. Yeah, you think he has time to read a script? He doesn't, he, he doesn't even know what bottle of whiskey he was drinking. He didn't even bother to read that label. Or, or hopefully it was whiskey. Not, nothing, nothing too powerful for a man of his age. Maybe it was a fine scotch. You never know. But uh, again, it led to that segment. That was awesome. And of course, Rusev comes out. Rusev Day. Rusev Day. And then I'm like, wait a second. Why are people cheering Rusev? He supposedly got Maria Canals pregnant. Where's Lana? I'll do that for later, too. Uh, then Authors of Pain gave another promo. Yeah, you kind of skip through it a little bit. Uh, Viking Raiders then took on uh, the OC. This was a brutal match. It was semi New Japan pro wrestling style. I think the one thing that you do miss in New Japan is the cursing. You just have to hear Tama Tonga go on a cursing tirade. And Yano, I don't even think Yano knows what he's saying. But it was it was cool. It was very New Japan like, very brawling. A good match though. Uh, they seem to have this formula where Carl Anderson's the guy who gets beat up. Luke Gallows is the one that makes the, that makes the tag to, to save him. It was a very deliberate pace, and I could get it. Um, and then they started to try to kill Carl Anderson again. So bad for Carl. But um, then they uh, splash onto Gallows, and, and they won. So actually, Luke Gallows ate the pin this time. It was, a, again, a hard-hitting match. It was, if this was five minutes longer at this pace, it would have been better. But the Viking Raiders did go over in a quality cheeseburger match. And then we had uh, Heel Cesaro taking on Face Ricochet. Oh, wow. That's what happens when you have all these pages built heavy. I'll tell you what. When Ricochet came out, I do like that 3D light display. That curve, that curve just added something to it. Um, so again, uh, Cesaro versus Ricochet. Ricochet, oh, he, he went for the quick, fast roll-up. He likes to try and catch people like that. Ricochet, oh, he's so fast. He, I think the only other per person at his speed is honestly Leo Rush. Edgy Sal is quick, but even he looks like a half step behind Ricochet. Or Ricochet looks like he has to slow down for AJ Styles. I mean, they're both that good, though. I mean, he can do so much flippy stuff, and Cesaro is so strong. He can catch him, do whatever. I, I, Cesaro's swing's fun. On Ricochet, that has to be easy, though, because Cesaro can get that on big people. Ricochet is a lot thinner and not as much mass to spin around. So, I, I, and that, and that uh, Gorilla Press GTS, that could be a finishing move in any other league. This should be. So much even better than the Gotch Neutralizer. And then to end the match, Ricochet did some flying flippy pausing Hurricanrana into a roll up pin. How he manages to how he manages to stop his momentum. He goes over the rope, 
Larry goes to a dead stop, pulls himself up in a sit-up, does a hurricanrana, holds on, goes for the roll-up pin. How he does that is freaking amazing. Ricochet went over. It was a good match again. Another good quality cheeseburger match. And it was Yowie Wowie! The Firefly Funhouse. Uh, there's Porkus, Abby the Witch, Mercy the Buzzer, and Ramblin' Rabbit. Ramblin' Rabbit's so scared, he scared himself to death. Listen, I know cats supposedly have nine lives. I think this Ramblin' Rabbit's on his like fourth or fifth life. He always seems to die. Um, I'm just waiting for Bo Dallas to show up in the Firefly Funhouse. It's still really good stuff, though. And then we have AJ Styles versus Cedric Alexander. AJ is another guy who can do all kinds of flippy stuff. And um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Cedric Alexander is can do flippy stuff. AJ can fly a little bit, not too big into flippy. He's kind of toned that down a lot, especially if you watch his TNA days when he was doing like corkscrew somersault planches off the off the top of cages and top of X's. Whoa. That was some pretty insane stuff that he was doing for a while, and I think he realized, I have to tranquilo. I think all wrestlers do that. They realize, yeah, I can do everything. And then they hit, like, age 38, and they're like, I don't want to do that anymore. That was dangerous. That was crazy. What was I thinking doing that? But, again, this was a good... Again, if it was a little bit longer... It had the New Japan-esque style. AJ did hit the uh, reverse DT, the Scorpion Death Drop. Uh, the rolling German into that face buster thing that AJ does. He, he must have added it. That was, that's a good addition. Uh, he won by Styles Clash. If it was another five minutes longer, it would have been a really fun match. AJ won. It was still, don't get me wrong, it was a fun match. It's a cheeseburger match. And we have Lacey Evans and Natalia. Why do I think this was going to happen at Hell in a Cell? I think they've changed the Hell in a Cell matches around a lot to accommodate the, this whole schedule change for some reason. Yeah, I just mentioned it for SmackDown on Friday, which is going to be a red wine and pizza SmackDown. The first one I'll have. Oh, wow, I worked that all day. Ooh. And I have to change that calendar. Shoot, I have to change that calendar tomorrow. Change that calendar, too. Uh, I've, I've, I actually have work to do. Then I have my other calendar hiding somewhere. <laughs> I took from school. I like stealing supplies. Seriously, wait. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I knew it was here somewhere. <laughs> I don't have to buy a desk calendar for next year. But Lacey Evans for Natalia. I thought this was, again, I thought this was going to be on Hell in a Cell. They had it here on Monday Night Raw. Um, I'll tell you what. Lacey Evans, when she works with, with Natalia, I don't know if they practice this a lot. It looks so much smoother. Uh, not botchy at all. In fact, I think the only match had a botch in it was the main event, minus the little stutter step. That's nothing, though. I, heaven knows I couldn't do that. I could probably pull off the other thing, though. But with this, Lacey Evans... Oh, she, she got vicious. She knocked Natalia down in the corner went outside, and literally banged your head against the steel metal steps. Ouch. Then, oh, she just started to bang her head in the middle of the ring. And it, it was different. Uh, uh, that cobra, she turned the cobra clutch into the smother. Boom, son! If you want to know what the smother is, just go over to Fight Perfect. Boom, son. And the smothers like Larry, like when you have someone in the choke and just 
rub their nose and stuff. Take their nose and call single mother. Oh! So it's like some white belt torture moves. The one guy uses. I should ask her permission if I can just like. Maybe maybe like, maybe this week I will later. Later. It's okay if I make it serious guys videos on my YouTube show for free. They'd probably be like, "They're gonna give us free ads." Yeah. And then while they drink their beer and talk with British accent, they're, they're cool guys. They have a pretty cool website. Check out Fight Perfect sometime whenever you feel like it. Uh, now he does get the comeback and he gets, hits Lacey with a discus clothesline. Um, Lacey Evans rolls up Natalia weird in a weird way. And I don't know if it was Bachi. It's probably the way they trained them. Because remember, Natalia is one of the few wrestlers that wears like a full bodysuit. So you could tell that Lacey Evans was trying to like, like grab her tights. But she doesn't have tights. <laughs> so <laughs> it looked like she just felt up Natalia's butt. Again, it's that little thing. That she has to realize. So Lacey Evans went over. A ham sandwich of a match. And then Paul Heyman came out. Um, he's like, he believes Vince McMahon. He brought my client, Brock Lesnar, out while he's in fight mode. What did you expect? Beck would happen, Vince. And then <laughs> Maria Canales comes out. Who's who's looking a lot more pregnant. Good for her. But Rusev is not the father. So that's weird. They're like going they're trying to do try it too much too quickly. Sasha Bank comes out on the mic. I don't care what Sasha Bank has to say. I'll tell you what, even though Maria Canellis is still pregnant, I tap that still. Versus Sasha Banks. I would not tap Sasha Banks. I prefer Maria Canellis. So, with that, it leads to our main event of the evening Rusev Kupria, Rusev Machka versus Seth Rollins. The only way the Saudis could really, really make this amazing is if Team Hulk Hogan came out on a tank. That would be too cool. Uh, it was um, Rusev versus Seth Rollins. And then for some reason, Randy Orton and Baron Corbin were up at the top of the stage. Randy Orton just looked bored. He's just like, dude, let me see that scepter. Yeah, he starts throwing the stuff around like a baton. He's like, "Yeah, this is this is a pretty cool, f cool thing here. You can have it back." I'm bored with it already. <laughs> uh, it was pretty good. Uh, Rusev again, no selling. He's a Bulgarian brute, and the way he should be. Uh, Seth does classic tough stuff. He does a dive, and I think it's almost at the point where you always expect him to see a dive. Go with, go a match without, or don't do a straight dive. Do like some you could do with some flippy moon salt off the top rope. It would be your dive, and it would be different at least. Uh, I think the only thing about this match, Rusev is just a little rusty. He botched. He tried to do a a deadlift slam onto Seth. He couldn't get him up all the way. Seth kind of rolled him up, and then all of a sudden, Rusev has Sethitis. Seth has Sethitis because Bobby Lashley showed up at the top of the ramp. Even Baron Corbin and Randy Orton were like, dude, what's this? But the almighty Bobby Lashley was at the top of the stage. And guess who came out? Who had to be prompted three times, by the way. Lana. And Bobby Lashley hugged Lana. 
he 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 kissed Lana, and Lana put her leg upon him. Oh, and Rusev was like. Even Rusev couldn't say anything. Seth was Seth and was like, huh? Until the lights started to go out and the Fiend attacked Seth. So I guess Seth Rollins won by DQ, baby. The Fiend came out. The Fiend has to bloody up Seth Rollins' forehead. Seth Rollins' forehead's too smooth. The Fiend gotta give him a little blood. Yeah, a little juice. So Lana showed up, though. And she was with Bobby Lashley. Oh! This has Heyman writing all over it. And uh, so I, I guess Seth won by, again, by, by DQ. It was a throwing match. It was a ham sandwich. Maybe not only did Bobby Lashley charm Lana, but maybe Bobby Lashley's the father too of Maria Canales' baby. I want my shiny quarter if that's if they do do that. So that would be pretty cool. And that was Monday Night Raw. I'll tell you what, it was a darn entertaining show. And I think the only time commentary got lost because the king started to say, I, I feel the fiend's presence. He said that like a whole bunch of times. And I think the King Lawler went quiet a lot during the Lacey Evans and the tie-in match. Although he did talk a lot about Stu Hart, though. He didn't say anything about Lacey Evans. So the king's trying to rehab his, his image. Overall, this was a fun show. This was a cheeseburger raw. Those are off. So remember, I'm going through my own schedule change. Tomorrow I watch Impact. It's going to feel weird. Wednesday, actually, I have wrestling every day this week except for Saturday. Because then Wednesday is going to. Ooh, AEW. Thursday is my predictions day for Hell on a Cell, I hope. Friday's red wine and red wine and pizza smackdown. And then Saturday I'm off. And then Sunday is gonna be a hell in a cell. A lot of wrestling this week. I wonder what's gonna happen. I wonder if 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 there's gonna be like a wrestling burnout from all this stuff. Well, see, it's the first week, so it's going to be probably the most exciting week week for a while. So I would like to thank everyone for watching. Again, if you see Hobo Tom on the WooTube Discord, you can always shout out hi, and just like I did with the other three people, your shout out, or you can always email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. And I have to check my email one, one of these days. I'm terrible at checking that, those emails. Or you can always leave a comment. So I'll see everyone tomorrow. Bye.